So this is the second in the three-part series that I entitled Postural Pain Relief. So a lot of us are working from home or finding that we're on our computers more, we're on our phones more, trying to keep up with our families and friends and coworkers. And so um, a lot of people I've been hearing are having more postural pain associated with that. So this series is all around looking at um, just finding improved posture with using the Feldenkrais method. Um, today specifically, we're gonna be connecting the work of the torso with the neck to take the strain off of the neck muscles. And it'll make more sense as we get going. Okay, so everyone's seated, I believe. The people I can see are. And so what I'd like you to do first is we're gonna do a little intro to the pelvis. I think most of you know what a pelvis is, but I um, got some feedback that I was using the word pelvis a lot and people weren't clear. So we're gonna do a little intro to the pelvis. That is the um, collection of large bones at the base of your spine that you're sitting on, right? So you have at the base of your waist, these large kind of flat bones that wrap around. They connect in the back at your sacrum where your tailbone is at the base of the spine. And underneath you can feel you have your sit bones. You could even bring a hand underneath actually feel for that sit bone on one side, kind of finding in between the seat and your bottom, just to get an idea of exactly where they are. They're a lot more narrow than you might think, kind of towards your midline, and they're small. We put, a, you know, we put our weight on, that, on them and um, we don't really have an idea of exactly how small they are. <laughs> we have a lot of flesh around them, but we, there's small little areas of, um, of weight bearing. So we're gonna be kind of rocking around those sit bones a lot today in their seated position. So I wanna make sure you knew what I was talking about when I say sit bone. Okay, so let's get started. You're gonna to come to the edge of your seat, feet flat on the floor, so no backrest. And just notice how you're sitting here to start. Are there some parts of you that feel more comfortable than others? And how is the weight distributed under your buttocks or those sit bones and your feet? Many people have weight more on one side than the other or more towards the back or your, on your tailbone or more towards the front. So just note kind of where you are now. We're gonna use this as a reference. Maybe even notice the length or the perceived length of the two sides of your body. So from the top of the pelvis at the waist up to the shoulder on that left side. Compare that to your right side. You may or may not notice a difference. It might be drastic, it might not be, so just file that away. Maybe to check in with the space between the tip top of your shoulder on one side. So let's say the right shoulder, if you were to draw an imaginary line to that right ear lobe, what's that length compared with the other side? Good. Okay, so just file all that away, as I said, just to get, um, a reference point for where you are now, and then we'll come back to this at the end and see if there's any changes. So we're gonna start with gently moving your head left and right like you're swaying in the wind. So shifting from one buttock to the other. So you're facing forward. Yeah, you're just shifting one side to the other. Notice how you come on to the one side of the pelvis to the other. And once you get an idea of that, Pause in the middle. And now you're gonna tilt your head left and right, ear to shoulder. And just see what your first impulse is. Is it to keep that shoulder still or move it with the head? So everyone together, why don't we do this 
keeping the shoulders still. So almost like you're just checking your range of motion of your neck. Just gonna tilt your one ear to one shoulder and then gently other side. So we're not really going to our full range. We're just looking to see what, what we're able to accomplish without too much strain right now. And to see how that feels. And the next time you let your head tilt to the right, allow that right shoulder to drop down as well. Good. And then return to upright. So with this work, we repeat a lot of these small movements over and over again in order to kind of bring awareness to different parts of your body. So the next time you bring that right ear towards your right shoulder, allow that right shoulder to go down. And you might notice the ribs on that right side become involved as well. They might soften on that right side so that you can find a little bit of a side bend. And notice if you're shifting your weight on your pelvis at all as you do this. And how is this affecting your breath? Just see how your, what your habit is. Is your habit to bring that right ear towards the right shoulder and shift your weight to that right sit bone? You can try that a couple of times if that's not your habit and see how that feels. That's like you're almost pitching yourself off the edge of the chair if you do that too far, right? If everything goes to the right. And then you can try a couple times where the right ear, right shoulder goes down, but you are shifting your weight on your pelvis to the left and see how that changes things in your spine a little bit. Just playing with some options. Good. Let's pause in the middle, just take a little rest. There's gonna be a lot of rests in this class and I know it's not like we're doing grueling exercise and you need to actually take a physical rest. It's more of a, a neurological rest because we're offering up a bunch of movement options and um, the nervous system needs to take all of that information and just process it. So we take breaks and breathe. So this time, so everyone's doing the same thing. You're gonna bring your head once again to the right. That, that right shoulder is going to dip down. And then I'd like you to actually to shift your weight onto that um, left sit bone. As, and think about as if you were trying to slide a piece of paper underneath your right butt cheek. So that might help you get that imagery. So in order to do this, you might notice you lift the right side of the hip and pelvis towards your head to make space for that imaginary piece of paper. And if this isn't clear, you could even place that right hand palm side up underneath the right sit bone in between the seat and you again, like we did earlier and see how that affects that right side shortening. Yeah, so in essence, that right shoulder and hip are moving towards each other. You're doing a nice little side bend. Great. When you get that idea, just take a break, seated, and observe. And even if I don't cue a break and you need one, please take one. Comfort is key here. You just wanna make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Okay, so before we head to the floor, I'm just gonna gently sway side to side again like we started. And notice that there's a difference between one side and the other. You might find a bit of more connection with the head and the spine as you shift your weight one side versus the other because we only really worked with that right side. And it might be so subtle you don't notice the difference and that's fine. Good. Okay. So come to stop. You're gonna head to the floor. I'll give you a little bit of time to do that. You're gonna end up lying down on your left side. So your right side's facing the ceiling. You're gonna prop up your head minimally if you need to. You probably are gonna want to. 
just to keep your neck in that alignment. Once you find your little spot, like you could take a nap there, <laughs> you want to be comfortable enough that you could turn this into a nice nap. Good. So you're going to start with your arms out in front of you, kind of one palm on top of the other, elbows straight. Right, so just starting there, get comfortable. You can bend those knees up, whatever is comfortable for your knees. Most people are there <laughs> trying to get their camera set up. So we're all on the same page. The right arm is the one on top. Okay. Great. Because everyone's facing different directions. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Great. So this is probably the most confusing verbiage of the whole class. So if you need to look at me, great. Do it. I'm going to do it with you. Identify your right arm. You're going to bring your right arm on top of your head, elbow to ceiling. That right hand is going to cup your left ear. So kind of in between the floor and your head. Like you're making a nice little package. Good, and if that's uncomfortable on that right shoulder, you can kind of migrate that palm up more to the crown top of the head if coming all the way around is uncomfortable. Great, so elbow to ceiling, perfect. Okay, and you're gonna hear my dog barking, apologies. Okay, so you're gonna start by gently lifting your head out to the side, like up to the ceiling, right? So that right ear towards your right shoulder. Just gently lift, keep that neck muscle quiet. And you're gonna go up and down, just up and down. You don't need to hold it. Just do this a few times. Just get a sense of the weight of your head. Just trying to Take away the active motion of lifting the head and allowing that top arm to lift almost passively. And just see what your range of motion is now, what's comfortable. When you get that idea, you can let it go and rest. Yeah, so just kind of see how that feels, perfect. And then rest that arm out in front of you again. You can just rest it anywhere, it can be on your side, it can just be palm on the floor in front of you, elbow bent. It doesn't have to be. Actually, I'd rather it not be straight. Just kind of a nice prop. Yeah, exactly. Just a nice place to rest that arm so it's not doing too much work. Great. So now you're gonna bring your attention to that right shoulder, the one facing the ceiling. You're just gonna shrug that shoulder down towards the pelvis and then returning to start. So just moving it down like you're, I don't know, that shoulder blade's gliding down your back. Just a few times. Notice how this feels. Start noticing as you're doing this a few more times, the ribs that are making contact with the floor. Could they push gently into the floor? to give you a bit more force as you bring that right shoulder towards your hip. Can they help? Mm -hmm. Just doing that a few times. Yeah, so you're just shortening that right side body again, like we did many times seated in the chair. And noticing that you have ribs on that floor side that can give you a little bit of, um, force effort from the floor. Take a break when you're ready. And now we'll slide that right shoulder towards the right ear. You can do that a few times and then just coming back to your neutral resting. So the right shoulder goes towards that right ear. Yeah. How easy is this side or this direction? What's happening on your right side when that shoulder comes up? 
It's lengthening, right? Those ribs open up on the right side. If you bring your attention to those low ribs that are making contact with the floor, they might even slightly come away from the floor when the shoulder comes up, like making a little bit of a space between the floor and the ribs making contact with the floor as that shoulder goes up towards your ear. So just make this easy. Seeing what other parts of your body can become involved in the movement of simply just raising and lowering that right shoulder. And rest here, just rest like you're gonna take a nap. And breathe, maybe on an inhale, the ribs will expand and the shoulder lifts a little. And an exhale, the shoulder falls a little. Nice. Just notice how the rib cage has become alive with your breath and how that relates to your shoulder. Good. So staying in this position, you're just gonna move that shoulder up towards the head, like we just did, and then back down towards the pelvis. We're making that full arc of movement. Yeah, so instead of stopping in the middle, you're just gonna go towards the ear and then towards the pelvis. And see if you can coordinate that with your breathing. This may mean you slow the movement down. And see if you can bring the part of yourself making contact with the floor again into this movement. Just play with it. Yeah, there's no right or wrong. Just see how this feels in your body. As long as, I guess the wrong would be if it hurts or you're straining. <laughs> so just make it easy. Lazily moving that shoulder up and down. And see how that pelvis can become involved with the work. Is it involved right now? Could you move in such a way that the pelvis maybe comes up to meet the shoulder as you lower it down, shortening that side, and then lengthening away from the shoulder as it comes up towards your ear. Yeah. And take breaks when you need to. It's really not important how much movement is happening, as I said before. Just want to get a sense of how much the back and the spine is participating in this movement. It's not just a shoulder movement. It's really as you lengthen and shorten your side body, your whole spine is involved. The rib cage is becoming more involved in the, in the work. And take a little break. Everyone just rests that shoulder. Hmm. We're going to check back in. You're going to bring that right arm up overhead again, kind of making that little package where that hand cups your left ear. And just check again. Go ahead and lift that head up and see are you how much movement you have now versus in the beginning, or the ease of movement. Just gentle. Do a couple times, whatever's interesting. You might notice that as you're moving it, the head might feel lighter. And obviously your head didn't change its weight, but what's happening is that the, you're really, your whole torso is helping that movement. It's not just the neck craning on top of the ribs. Great. And you can take a rest from that and roll back, roll to your back and rest. You can move the, the pillow support or you can leave it there, whatever's comfortable. Just rest legs long, arms long by your side. So we've been working with that right side quite a bit. Just notice, compare the two sides of yourself. 
you may notice that the shoulders rest differently on the floor, right versus left. Might have a more open sensation on that right side of the body versus the left side. So this work is so subtle. I do like to have a little pause in between working sides so you can really sense some of these changes that are happening as the tonus of the muscles around the bones are starting to release. Very slowly, without rushing, you're gonna head back to your chair. So take your time. Yeah, when you get there, you're gonna find yourself at the edge of the chair again, feet flat on the floor. Give you guys a few seconds to get organized. You can leave your camera where it was. Um, where we are heading back to the floor. I don't necessarily need to see it here unless you can easily move the camera lens. So as you're seated here, just observe yourself. Notice if you sense a difference on one side versus the other in, in the seated position against gravity. Go ahead and tilt your head one side to the other, coming back to that same movement. Maybe there's a spontaneous involvement of the right side of the torso folding as you bring the right ear to the right shoulder. So we did that movement quite a few times. Compare this with the left side, which we haven't worked with, and see how that side of the torso feels. Might be a little stiffer, a little less coordinated. Or maybe none of the above, but <laughs> just notice. Okay. Good. So pause in the center. So as an experiment, we're gonna we're gonna move on to that left side. So we're all doing the same thing. You're gonna drop your ear toward your sorry, your left ear towards your left shoulder, tilt your weight to the left side, like you're gonna look down towards your left heel. Yeah, you're gonna do this many times. Come back up. And as you do this a few more times, just look for slightly easier ways of doing these movements with each repetition. Check in with your breath as you do this. How is this movement of us more or less keeping the spine straight and leaning to the left? Where you're taking your center of gravity, your whole body weight outside of your base of support or your pelvis, how does that make your breath feel? It's, it could be a little catchy, because what happens, you can pause when you're, when you like. Um, what happens when we start to pitch ourselves outside of our our center of gravity is our breath tends to shorten, tends to tighten, our muscles tighten up because we're trying to prevent ourselves from falling. Okay, so we're gonna give you another option. Everyone's starting in center. Your left ear is gonna to go to that left shoulder and let that left shoulder follow. Feel how that whole left side begins to soften and the ribs soften on that side and then come back to center. Good, so your weight is shifting now onto your opposite side of your pelvis. So that would be your right side. I get my rights and lefts right. So you're softening through that left side of your rib cage. Almost that spine is doing like a C shape behind you as you shift your weight onto that right buttock. Good. Like you're trying to put that piece of paper underneath that left butt cheek. 
and then rest. So just noticing that there's different options for movement. I mean, there's not one right way, but just notice how in your own body, how it feels to just play with these two different options of keeping the spine straight and tilting everything over to the left or allowing some suppleness in the rib cage and the spine to help kind of counterbalance ourselves. Good. So everyone head back to the floor when you're done playing with the seated movements. This time you're gonna be on your right side. So we'll even you out. So the opposite side that you started on. When you get there, just tune into your breathing. Those left ribs, the ones facing the ceiling, might open and close a little bit with your breath. Just have a nice soft space for that left hand to rest. So the more mobile our ribs can become, it affects our breathing, usually in a good way. Allows for more lung expansion and a fuller sense of breath allowing for slower, deeper breaths, getting out of that kind of fight or flight anxiety. So these are really good just to have a nice expansive rib cage for general health. Okay, so we're gonna do that sandwich motion. So you're gonna take that left hand over the top of your head to hold your right ear. Just a reference, you're gonna lift your head gently off the floor checking in with how heavy the head feels in this direction. So you already know where we're going with this. <laughs> so you might already be implementing some, some of what we did on the other side. Um, just notice your range of motion here and take a rest when you've got that idea. And just rest that top arm in a comfortable spot anywhere in front of you. You're gonna let that left shoulder come up towards your ear, just like we did on the other side. Yeah, and down towards your hip. So we're gonna do the full arc of movement. We know where we're going here. Shoulder glides up towards your ear, down towards your hip, coordinating with your breath. So on an inhale, the shoulder comes up, Exhale, the shoulder goes down. Check in with the ribs around the low back on the side touching the floor. And why don't we on this side exaggerate a little bit? So I'm actually gonna have you actively lift those floor ribs away from the floor on an inhale and then press them into the floor on an exhale. Yeah, most active we're gonna get here today. Just to get the idea that that pelvis can become involved in the movement as well. So you might notice it rocks the pelvis a little bit as you shift there. Just respecting the rhythm of your breath, Just taking your time. Pelvis and shoulder get closer on that left side and then separate and rest when you feel like you've, you're getting that on that side or just rest when you feel like you need to rest. Good, let's bring that left arm overhead again, taking that head away from the floor. Just see if there's any more clarity about the movement here lower down in the ribs. Yeah, great. If your head suddenly got lighter. Good. And when you're done there, just roll to your back, legs long, arms long. So when we do these Feldenkrais lessons, 
Um, sometimes I only do one side and that's on purpose. Today, obviously, we evened you out. Yeah, this is a good time for you, Aga, if you wanted to head out. Yeah, we got a little bit more in seated to do, but Aga's got to go. Thanks for joining. So just resting here. Check in with your breath. How are you taking support from the floor now? Are there parts of your body that are resting more fully, evening out one side versus the other? Great, and when you are ready, you're gonna come back to your chair. I guess as I was saying, I got distracted, but as I was saying, um, in these lessons, we'll spend a lot of time on the one side, this, then our nervous system starts to get it, right? So when we come to the second side, we don't have to spend as much time because our bodies already kind of know what's, what's there and it integrates it pretty quickly. So you notice we didn't spend as much time on the left side, but you probably still got the, the gist, your body figured it out. So when you get to your chair, you're gonna sit on the edge again, feet flat. And observe how you're sitting now. I'm gonna go back to the first thing we did, just shifting side to side, rocking one buttock to the other. Just notice if it's easy, maybe more fluid than before. I'm gonna pause in the middle. Okay. So we're gonna go into a series we're really going to talk about the movement of the pelvis and all the directions it can move. And I call this the pelvic clock. Um, so imagine you were sitting on a clock face. Okay, you're shifting side to side. That would be three and nine. Okay. So you're shifting onto one sit bone and then the other. Good. So we are on the same page as three and nine. And then envision 12 and six on your clock and begin to shift forward and backward on your pelvis in this plane. Just small. <coughs> Pardon me. Good. <coughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so now let's pause in the middle. We got our four cardinal directions. So this is a clock face though. So now I'd like you to think about connecting the dots around the clock face. So you can start from 12, roll around to three, three to six, six to nine, nine to 12. So I started clockwise. You can do that a few times. Make it easy. <laughs> Make sure you're breathing. Your clock face might be like, a stopwatch. It might be, you know, a pocket watch or, you know, just it doesn't have to be a giant clock that you're rolling around, just so you get the idea of this circular rolling of the pelvis. Now try counterclockwise a few times. And as you're doing this, what's your head doing? Is it following the circle of the pelvis? Just notice what your habit is. And you might not know, <laughs> that's okay. There isn't a right or a wrong way. The point of all this is to notice your habits and then um, offer up other options of movement which may or may not feel more comfortable or efficient. So let's pause in the middle. We're gonna do, play a little game. Um, so imagine there's a beam of light shining out from the top of your head to the ceiling. Okay, we're gonna to return to those cardinal directions of three and nine and 12 and six. So maybe listen before we move. You're gonna move yourself in such a way that the beam of light draws a line on the ceiling above your head as you're shifting to the left and the right sides of the buttocks of three or nine. So the head mimics the pelvis. So the spine stays relatively straight. You're just drawing a nice line on the ceiling with your beam of light from your head like you're a TikTok here. Good. And then you can try the same idea going forward and back. 
So everything's staying pretty stiff. You're just rocking forward. That beam of light is just making a nice vertical line on the ceiling. Good. Awesome. So you're going towards the front of your pelvis and then towards your tailbone. Okay, now pause in the middle. If you're feeling ready, you're gonna make a circle. Okay, so the um, pelvis is gonna start circling. The beam of light is also going to start circling in that same direction. So the head circle will be larger in theory than the one that your pelvis is making. Good. So just go small enough that you can feel the subtle weight shifts and not that you're gonna pitch yourself off the chair in either direction, just you get the idea. And then pause in the middle. When you get that, I, that movement concept. Okay, so that's one option, right? Everything kind of stays stiff then you can kind of roll around that way. I'm gonna give you another option. This should start feeling familiar because we spent the whole lesson doing these moves. So imagine before you move, you're gonna go back to those cardinal three and nine and 12 and six directions. So you still have that beam of light at the top of your head, drawing a line from three to nine, but this time the pelvis is shifting its weight from nine to three. So get that in your head first. So your head and pelvis are moving in opposite directions. So if your light is going towards nine in, in your head, yeah, <laughs> you're gonna shorten on one side and then you're gonna shorten on the other side. So just go side to side first. So this is just like what we did a bajillion times in the lesson, right? You're gonna lift up one side of the pelvis, shifting your weight onto the other side. Yeah, getting a little side bend gently. We did this, this should feel familiar. Let's pause in the center when you get that down. All right, now we're gonna go 12 to six. So this is a position we haven't done, but it's good to practice. So you're gonna tilt your pelvis forward towards 12, but instead of allowing that head to come forward with, you're gonna find a slight arch in your back, allowing for your head to gently point towards six. So like your head looks up, your chest expands as your pelvis comes forward, arching the spine. And then as the pelvis rocks back to six, you're going to round forward. So the head beam of light comes towards a 12 o'clock on the ceiling clock. I'm just going to rock forward and back like that. Expanding open in the chest when the pelvis is at 12. And then kind of collapsing and rounding. The head comes down when the pelvis rocks back towards six and you have your weight on your tailbone. Yeah, just play with that a few times. Making it easy and breathing, just toggling and then resting in the center when you're ready. Okay, you know we're coming to the circle, so we're gonna attempt a full circle. You can play with this on your own, go slowly, and you might wanna imagine it first. So you can first focus on the pelvis. So just think about the pelvis going in a clockwise circle. And then add the head. So the head's gonna go counterclockwise as the pelvis goes clockwise. So I'm gonna refrain from doing this because if you look at me, you might get backwards. Just play with it, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just make it pleasurable. If you find that you're straining, that's your cue to take a break. You can imagine in your head and then come back to it. And once you get it, it feels kind of nice. It's like this nice undulating, the spine is doing a side bend and then a round and then a side bend and then an arch. You can just let the muscles go and not feel like you're forcing anything. The pelvis takes the lead. I'm just rocking over that pelvis. Yeah. Okay. 
Take a break when you're done playing with that. And yeah, so everyone rest. You can play with this later. <laughs> Good. Yeah, when you get listen to this recording later, you can press pause and just play with it for as long as you want. Okay, so now because I'm a physical therapist, we're gonna take this into daily function because what's the point of all this if we don't bring it into function, right? So I want everyone to take their dominant hand out to the side or dominant arm out to the side, whatever that is. Lengthen it like you're gonna reach for something, okay? So you can imagine that you're in your work from home space, you're anywhere, right? You're gonna reach in different angles. Just reach, and I want you to look at your hand because when we reach for stuff, we typically look where we're reaching, right? And out to the side, forward, back, like there's a big sphere in front of you. You're just reaching, you're kind of changing your movement. And notice how it looks like all of you that I can see, you're really reaching with your pelvis, which is beautiful. It might happen spontaneously because we've been doing a lot of this. Yeah, great. And just see how that feels. You might cross your body and reach. Just see how easy that feels, how pleasurable it can be to reach. Good, and then pause in the center. And then as an experiment with your other arm, reach to the side, like you're gonna reach for something, but lock that pelvis down. Pretend that our pelvis doesn't move for the purpose of this experiment. And just see what that, how much effort it requires to reach for something. Like you might reach with your torso, but if the pelvis doesn't roll and rock with you, it's a lot more effort. The arm feels heavier typically. And then add in the pelvis. Let it help. Bring it in. Yeah, just see how much nicer that feels. Good. So if you find that you're seated at your desk and you're feeling like you're stuck, you can take breaks <laughs> when you're done reaching. Check in with what your pelvis is doing. It's likely that you've locked it down and that's so common. We sit on it, we, we forget it's there, it's stuck and we're reaching for things, we're doing things, we're only moving from the, maybe the mid spine or moving just from the neck, right? And that's when we get into trouble. But if you check back in with that pelvis and everything you're doing is from the pelvis, I mean, everything stacks up above it and takes, the, the work off of the musculature of your spine and your neck, especially. Yeah. So before we uh, close, just see how you're feeling and sitting now. How your shoulders are resting. Maybe the length between your shoulder and your ear on either side. your length, perceived length of either side of your side bodies. You're feeling taller, longer, lighter, less muscular effort to hold yourself up. Yeah, good. And that's the class. I'm gonna unmute you guys. Um, take this into your day, if I can figure out how to unmute you guys. Uh, that was great. Oh, good. I don't know how to unmute everybody. <laughs> Here, I'll do it individually. There aren't too many of you. There, I unmuted you. There we go. Well, thanks for joining. Hope you guys are feeling a little more open and lighter. Um, next week, if you want to join either Monday at 8 a.m. Pacific time or same time next Friday, the class is going to be more subtle. It's going to be really focusing more on the jaw the eyes, the neck. So anyone who deals with Team J or just general eye strain and postural neck issues from being at the computer, it's gonna be really helpful for that. 